Welcome back everybody, my name is Lewis, this is Man Bites Film, and this week's episode in tribute to Memorial Day that just passed, I want to pay homage to all our fallen veterans and everything, and I'm going to be reviewing three film, well, two films that are on Netflix and one that's on Amazon Streaming Network. Um, the first one that I want to review, and these are my top three that I was able to find on the streaming networks, and there's not much of a pick really. So this is sort of a, a vague selection, I guess I would want to say. I'm probably going to do a tribute to, to this in a future uh, episode, probably 4th of July or something like that, where I'll actually do the top five favorite war movies of all time. And you're going to see some, you know, repeats on that, obviously, but these are the three that are currently streaming. Um, the first one that I really, really loved was Tora Tora Tora. This was 1970, two and a half hour long epic that uh, starred Martin Balsam and Shal Yamara. And it was directed by Rick, Richard Fleischer um, towards the end of the film. The beginning of the film was actually, when they first initially started the project, it was actually supposed to be directed by Akira Kurosawa, which as you all know, is one of my favorite directors of all time. And he actually did the storyboards for pretty much the whole film in oil paintings and everything. There's books about this because of how beautiful it looked. And uh, Richard Fleischer actually continued that and did most of the, the storyboards beat by beat, basically. He actually copied what Kurosawa was going to do as a tribute to him because of the fact that he was taken off the project. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, this is a film about the Pearl Harbor attack uh, and it follows both sides of the story, really. It follows the American sides building up to the actual assault, and it also follows the Japanese generals and what their mindset was, uh, according to the filmmakers, obviously. And um, this is a spark of controversy for me. Always, Pearl Harbor has always been a very like eh, touchy subject with me, I guess you could say, because. I don't consider it a surprise attack or a sneak attack. Um, the Japanese give you a little bit of a history lesson. The Japanese actually were in talks with the US uh, president and everything, trying to, to, to bring down an embargo that they put on Japan because of obviously their, their war efforts and expansion uh, expansionist drive to take over China and the, and the Pacific. But the embargo was there, and according to the Japanese laws and their traditions, mind you, their traditions are completely different than Western tradition. You put an embargo on them, that's a declaration of war already. So Pearl Harbor technically isn't, uh, what do you call it, a surprise attack, because the countries were already at war. And the fact that the US already knew about this attack, I do believe that. The day before these attacks occurred, the the what do you call it, the Americans actually pulled out their aircraft carriers and, and sent them to the Midway the day before the attack. Irony much? Yeah. So, um, and that was the future of, of naval warfare was aircraft carriers. The battleships, destroyers, all that stuff was obsolete and they needed a reason to get into the war. This was their reason to get into the war. And it's, it's messed up that they did that, but I also see the, the, the point of it. The Japanese also never attacked civilian populations. They attacked the military populations. They didn't go into the towns in, uh, close to Pearl Harbor. They attacked the military installation. And as a result, only less than 10 uh, civilian, civilian casualties occurred. And those were people that were actually visiting the military base in this surprise attack. And just to give you an idea, the, the Japanese and against the Americans had no personal vendetta. This was a it was an act of war and they needed to basically make the USC like, hey, look, we want you to take off this embargo. If not, we're gonna attack your homeland. All right, so they did this as sort of like a preventive measure to stop that from occurring and try to see if they could actually drop the, the embargo, but it failed. And all it did was like the general says in the one of the most famous lines, you have awoken a, a sleeping giant, yeah. That's what occurred. So um, again, this is Tora Tora, 1970 film. 
it follows both sides of Pearl Harbor and I love the Japanese side again Kurosawa did this beat by beat and he followed it very extensively throughout the production process and behind the scenes when he when he was taken off the project because of personal and political reasons he was taken off of it it wasn't like a fact of his work or anything like that it was just political reasons that the studios took him off so again Tora 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 that one is streaming on Netflix and so without further ado here's our feature artist for this week and we'll see you guys in a couple minutes everybody um now for the next two features we're gonna do the longest day which i'm pretty sure everybody is familiar with it's a john wayne film um it is basically the story of d-day invasion and what led up to the d-day invasion and how it basically unfolded it's basically saving private ryan but before the invasion rather than after the invasion so it was the closest thing to a war film that was considered at this point. This was the most epic battle people have ever seen on screen when it comes to World War II, World War I. 
Nobody had ever seen anything as violent, as vicious, as close. And the fact that this was only a PG film done in 1962, and it was three hour long epic of this. Uh, Henry Fonda's in this. There's, there's a bunch of people in it that basically that are all star cast. And this was such a great film, especially for its era. Uh, it's a little dated. So if you're not into films that are older style, you probably will not be into this. Toro 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 is a little bit easier to swallow and it's not as difficult and it's only two and a half hours long. That extra half an hour really adds. So um, this one, The Longest Day, again, this is a great pick for, for you to watch in tribute to, to The Fallen Soldiers. And this is streaming on Netflix currently. And that's pretty much all I have to say about The Longest Day. Um, the next film, which is one of my personal favorites about American history, war films, is Gettysburg. This film is not streaming on Netflix, it's streaming on Amazon, and it's with Martin Sheen and, and James Patrick Stewart. This is 1993, and this one comes in at a whopping four and a half hour long film, okay? It's a PG film, originally um, played on TV, and this is a beautiful film that looks at the Civil War in a completely new light. It shows you that, that brother against brother type of aspect of the war and how bad it really was because the fact that they were fighting against people they grew up with and the South and the, and the North really didn't have much of a difference, but they were fighting for their causes with all their heart and it was intense. But this, and going back again, history lesson time. The Civil War was not about slavery. It was about different aspects of political variation that certain Southern uh, states wanted and the Northern states did not want. And mostly was with that was basically running, um, selling things to, to other countries like Britain and England, you know, England stuff and France stuff. They, they did not want to sell them anything, the North. And they wanted to put embargoes on, on the sales and taxes and tariffs and this and that and the other. And North basically wanted more government. And the South did not want more government. Um, they wanted not federalism, but they wanted um, more statism, the North. And they didn't want... They, they picked up slavery sort of as like uh, like an afterburner thought like all right we need to, to lift up the, the what do you call it the soul of our army and this gives them a crusade to, to fight for the, the slavery and that that's what happened it wasn't about slavery initially it was about government and how limited the government should be and should not be Again, the South wanted very limited government. They did not want the government involved in their everyday lives. Uh, the North wanted that. And then Abe Lincoln came in and sort of brought that down as part of the Republican Party initially, the first Republican Party. And he sort of said, no, we're not going to do we're not going to do huge government. And this is the reason that the North and South finally came to an agreement was because Lincoln sat down with the South and said, hey, look, we're not going to do this. We're going to do this. Okay. And this is what I've been trying to tell you guys, but the, they were so hard headed and they did not want to meet. They're like, you know what? No, we're not going to do this. You're going to take away our source of income. Not a chance. No way. So they, they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And, and this battle, this one battle, Gettysburg was the epic, like center of the whole war. This is where, where the Gettysburg address was and th that speech if you have never read that speech it is beautiful elegant uh, Abe Lincoln always had an eye for flair and for, for political speech that was his strong suit and he does a phenomenal job with this speech and this motivated the country to, to continue the war effort and finish it off finally and Martin Sheen as General Lee was wow 
you see both sides of the story in this film. You see the South and you see the North side of the story and what their struggle is. And the battle scenes are very suspenseful, very like thriller style, very, very ahead of its time. And especially for a TV movie that was released, that was like, that blew my mind when this was released as a TV. And I was like, what? That's a TV movie? No way. Yeah. So, um, Gettysburg, this one's streaming on Amazon. It's a little bit harder to find. Um, and if you want to buy it, Walmart sells it for like $5. So it's not a hard find. It really is not. So I wanted to put that in here as well. Um, so again, that wraps up this episode. And just to pay tribute to all our fallen soldiers and, and everybody that has passed away in, in so many wars that this country has fought, for good or for bad. Whether you agree with them or you do not, they have fought for what this country is now and to give you the rights that you currently have. Whether you agree with the wars or not, which there are plenty that I do not agree with, but I see the strategic point to them as a result of the ends of those wars. So as homage, I want to pay tribute and give a moment of silence to all the fallen soldiers and and everybody that has fought for this country to be the way it is now. So if you guys will please join me in that. Thank you guys, and I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and we'll see you guys next week on Man Bites Film, like always.